I was like, F them. And my dad looked really sad and hurt for me. And I moved back to my parents' house. And, you know, initially I was supposed to share Jay's room with her and her baby. But the very day I came over, she asked me to sleep in our brother Kendrick's room because she was going to have a guy over. And, you know, I was like, okay, it's fine. I just asked Kay if I could just sleep in his room, period. And I did. I just slept on Kay's floor. And that was just a very hard time for me. You know, sleeping in my brother's room. You know, he's sleeping on his bed. I'm just sleeping on his floor. <sighs> just did nothing for my growth in any area. Definitely did not feel feminine. I was just so, so unhappy. The very next day, y'all, Jamarcus texted me asking me if I could pick him up from work. And I did. And when I got there, Wendy called him and she asked if I had picked him up. And he said, yeah, with a smile on his face. And then he looked at me and his expression was just incredulous. Like either he couldn't believe that I had picked him up or he couldn't believe that, you know, I was really that manipulated and easily toyed with by him. He told me, he was like, oh, there's nothing happening between Wendy and I. She's just being a friend. And I believed him because I loved him and I just wanted to be with him. This guy had me right where he wanted me. He even asked me if he could get the car back and I gave it back to him. And I recall riding with my father somewhere one day and we stopped at Wendy's dad's house and my, my dad was talking to Wendy's dad. They were brothers and um, he was talking about how Wendy was allowing my husband to continue living there. And Wendy's dad was like, yeah, she know that's wrong. And soon after, Wendy texted me saying that I could come over whenever I wanted. And, um, you know, it took me some time, but I saw that she just got tired of people saying things about, you know, the situation she'd agreed to. She got tired of people, I don't know, saying whatever they were saying about her decision to allow him to remain there when I wasn't. But at the time I was naive, I was naive, I was naive. And I thought she was just being kind. I thought that she was trying to extend some kindness to me. I love my cousin and, you know, although I would never under any circumstance make the decision that she made, I will go ahead and acknowledge that Jamarcus was a very manipulative person. Jamarcus quit his job at the tire factory while he was still living with Wendy. Um, he said it was hard on his body. And I, I really feel like I paid a week's rent for him to continue living there. And I know there was one week when he, you know, donated plasma to pay her rent. And he never told her that he quit his job. He said that he was just going to, you know, spend all day at his grandmother's to make it look like he was working. I also wanted him to be as well as possible. So I told him, you know, if you want to quit and it's, you know, destroying your body, maybe you should. You know, um, he still had the car during this time. And um, I know that our arrangement was for him to take me back and forth to work. And since he was no longer working and... I remember he, he was just really late picking me up from work one day. Like, I was really tired. Like, there was a job I had to just stand on my feet for 10 hours a day. And I wasn't really moving. Like, I was just standing in one spot. And that may not sound like a hard thing to do, but it is. So, my feet would always be killing me. And when he finally did arrive, you know, he acted like it was no big He acted like it was no big deal. And he acted like I was overreacting. And the next day, I told my coworkers, because you know, you, you work with people, you know, you start to develop some kind of bonds. Um, so I told them that he was late picking me up. And they were like, he was late picking you up in your own car and he isn't even working. When I was still living at Wendy's, our cousin Chrissy moved in. She was Wendy's live-in maid. When I was no longer living at Wendy's, but Jamarcus still was, Jamarcus texted me one day saying that Chrissy had slapped him. And I remember when I arrived there, they were standing outside of Wendy's house, just hurling insults at each other. 
Chrissy told Jamarcus, your wife's a, the B word, you know, just putting me into things and I'm, I'm just a bystander. And Chrissy's next response was, you're just mad that you can't sleep with me. Cause Jamarcus had called her a whore. And that was her response. Um, and so he would often say that she was prostituting herself. And yeah, I guess, I guess that's why he called her that and why she responded that, you know, he's just upset that he can't sleep with her. And, you know, later on, Jamarcus told me that he was upset that I didn't jump on Chrissy. He, I don't know, I guess he watched a lot of world star hip hop. You know, if he chose to continue living with my female cousins after I moved out and got slept by one of them, it isn't on me to jump on them. Especially when I knew I was dealing with a woman who was much more broken than I was. You know, I couldn't see much in those days. Um, I couldn't see the light, but I could see that, you know, Chrissy was broken and that arguing with her, arguing with her and for Jamarcus in that instance, you know, it wasn't my fight. It wasn't the thing to do. To be honest, I don't fight anyway. I haven't gotten into a fight since I was like 11. So I told Wendy what happened, you know, that Chrissy slapped Jamarcus. And Wendy's response was, you know, telling Chrissy to leave. Looking back, I see that, you know, Chrissy was just a broken woman who needed a place to stay. She was our cousin. You know, she was someone we grew up with. She had a right to be there. There was nothing weird about her being in a home with her female cousin and her female cousin's small children. There was, however, something weird about a grown man who was approaching 30 who no one really knew, you know, living there. He just had no right to be living with his wife's single cousin and her small children. He stated that Wendy began giving him the cold shoulder and hiding her snacks from him. I asked Jay again if Jamarcus could move in with us and he did. Um, and that was in December of 2016. So my ex-spouse living with my cousin while I was still married to him, that was a weird time in my life. After I separated from Jamarcus, I began seeing, you know, even more how crazy it was um, that Wendy allowed him to live there. And it took me a little bit of time to stop being upset about it. But I'm not upset about it anymore, you know. Her decision to let him live there did not traumatize me. And also, you know, I just want to mention the song that was on my heart when Wendy first said that we could move in with her because I was grateful. I, I like different types of music as long as it has a good message. And the song that was on my heart at that time was Lifelines by Rodney Atkins and particularly the chorus. Um, yep, the chorus of that song just expressed my gratitude and expressed my view of her um, at the beginning of that time. But y'all, praise God, I'm going to stop the video right here. But y'all, in the next video, I will discuss further manipulation from Jamarcus, as well as he and I get in our own place through a series of events.